fucking sky hold here for the first time, as we finally made it at the end of the last session. There are still some repairs to be done, that's clear, but it is lovely to be home. Alright, so it looks like we have two little welcome quests here. We have to find the blacksmith and find the war room. We'll have time to explore the grounds a bit in a minute. Let's go to that blacksmith. I believe it's over here. Pardon me as I slowly warm my vocal cords up over a period of what will feel like eons. Him. What can I make? Oh, this is lovely. Uh, hello, Herod. Sir, I've walked what say you? Too many burning buildings for one lifetime. This place, though, it'll be all right. It's inquisitor now, isn't it? That'll take some getting used to. Hmm. You think it's strange to say? It's stranger to hear. Don't let it go to your head. We need you level. Everyone just got a big hard reason to hate Corypheus. And we already did, but we didn't have a name. You did what you could, I suppose. Ah, so this must be one of the people that I was able to save. I think I lost, like, three of our townsfolk, regrettably. And so I guess if you did manage to save them, maybe they have a little, uh, leftover for you? We left in a hurry. But you got into your old place. Save anything? Family Ammer. It's as stupid as it sounds. It's good to be back at work. All right, I'll let you get back to it. I'll be here. So, we have the same store of, uh, crafting tables and modification tables and what appears to be a Skyhold customization planning table. Now that is cool. All right. Also potions. Great. They've combined pretty much everything into this one room. Tint armor. Ooh. So I guess one of these cloths is likely... I can't tell if, like, most of my skirt, or whatever you would call it, is leather, or if it's a cloth. It kind of looks like leather, so I'm not sure what the second cloth would be besides the red. But we'll come back around to these things. It's very cool to have access to that. I completely forget what this golden nug does. I kind of thought that there's, like, those collectible alcohol bottles and stuff which we should finally be able to see in Skyhold. There's like a wine cellar. And I, I thought that if you hit the golden nug, it like synchronizes your collectibles across your games. So you don't have to find the same alcohol bottles again, but I'm really not sure. And I don't want to, say, spoil the flow of our playthrough by bringing forward old collectibles, but I'll look that up. Now that we're in Skyhold, we do get a couple more schematics from our DLC chest. That is nice. And that should be all we need for now. Let's find that war room. Hard in Hightown, Chapter 6, by Varric Tethrus. The estates of Hightown fall into three types. The dwarven palaces in their enclave, huddled around their counterfeit paragon statues, for shelter against the onslaught of human ideas that surround them. The foreign quarter, where the wealthiest Orlesian and Antivan merchants stay during their twice-yearly visits to criticize the ship captains and shop clerks and accountants in their employ and the noble mansions, where families who can trace their lineage back to Orlesian conquerors and to winter landlords perch to look down on the rabble of ordinary folk scurrying at their feet. Pardon me one moment. A 
But whoever they belong to, all of the High Town estates have two things in common. A showy front entrance used when the occupants want to be seen, and a hidden back way when they don't. The servant's door to the Comte de Favre's mansion was in an alley hidden by overgrown topiaries. Donin Brenokovic picked the lock while his partner Jevlon kept an uneasy lookout. They had left their armor at the barracks, but even in civilian clothes the recruit managed to look like he was wearing an older brother's hand-me-downs. I don't think this is what the captain meant when she said to get evidence, he muttered. The lock clicked, and Donin gently pushed it open. Only a few slivers of light slid through the shuttered windows. Silence hung in the air like a cheap tapestry. Ah, how gaudy! Donin and Jevlon crept through the dark rooms, alert for any sign of servants, but nothing broke the eerie quiet except their footsteps. In fact, there was no sign that anyone had been in the house at all until they found the room whose door had been torn from its hinges. Inside, the Comte lay in a pool of blood, one hand clutching a loaded crossbow, a dagger hilt protruding from his back. Dun-dun-dun! Oh, Varric, you've still got it. Just as elegant prose as ever. All right, a quick note about the undercroft. Thank you. Nice, solid place to fill full of your toys. So we also have a storage chest, finally. So if there are, say, uh, rare weapons that we don't want to use anymore, but we don't want to destroy or lose either, we could potentially throw them in here. All right, let's search out that war room. Good morning, all. So nice to see you there. And happy Thursday, indeed. I hope everyone is doing well. Or as well as can be. So I think the war room is down there. I guess we'd better get it out of the way here. Hmm. A little doorway for later. All right. Josephine. <laughs> Still a, a touch of a uh, wood in the corner there that's unneeded, I think, but compared to, say, the main lobby, Josephine's office is hilariously tidy. Well done. How are things? I've made some inquiries into the Imperial Court. The sooner we deal with the threats to the Empress, the better. The political situation in the Empire is dangerously unstable. It will complicate matters. Everything in the Empire complicates matters. It's the Orlesian national pastime. Turn your nose up at the grand game if you like, Commander. But we play for the highest stakes, and to the death. The Court's disapproval can be as great a threat as the Venatori. We must be vigilant to avert disaster. So sorry. I am confident. Let's go with this. Don't worry, Josephine. We'll protect the Empress, no matter what. I pray you're right. If your vision of the future comes to pass, the death of the Empress heralds the destruction of everything. Orle holds Tevinter at bay. All of Thedas could be lost if the Empire falls to Corypheus. Céline is holding peace talks under the auspices of a grand masquerade. Every power in Orle will be there. It's the perfect place for an assassin to hide. Ah. A grand masquerade? I need to go shopping. We don't have enough sway with the court to arrange an invitation. Perhaps a few more alliances. Or soldiers. We need a greater presence in Orle. And soon. Certainly. So if we have any hope at saving the Empress, we need more political sway in the courts. Which 
requires thirty power, it appears. We're doubling up from last time. Oh, wow, that's a nice new table. Like one solid sheet of tree. Big fan. Alright, so can I finally get... I know we were looking for those forward scouts. I still need to capture a keep. Okay. I keep forgetting. We'll find a keep out there. I forget how to start those off exactly. Another 15 inventory slots. I can't say I'm not tempted. It's just about the only worthwhile one to buy at the moment, but I could just save the Inquisition perk for now. See if we can capture a keep, maybe. All right, so we once again have access to the board and all of our locations. Good. Dorian's request. Tell me about it. The city now that you're in charge... Five dozen oh, sorry. Not raw recruits. Uh, with luck, they'll know which end to grip a sword by. Now that you're in charge, there's something I thought I'd bring up. There are venatory mages out there lurking in the wilderness. This comes as no surprise to you, since you can't swing a dead cat without hitting one of Corypheus's minions, but these particular venatori have additional significance to myself. For one, I know them personally. I would call them friends, except that would imply I didn't want them dead, which I do. Since I have an idea of where they might be, thanks to an investigation I began before coming south, I thought we could put our heads together and track them down. Oh, Dorian, I would never miss an opportunity to put my head together with you. Okay, so they can do it uh, quickly with spies, a little less quickly with soldiers, or slowly with political. <laughs> Leliana will look into it carefully and quietly. We do not wish to alert the Venatori. That sounds like the right thing to do. Let's see what we have. We'll check back in with Leliana. Acquire the Arcanist. That sounds interesting. Skyhold has incredible potential for rune crafting and mastercraft smithing. If only we had a gifted mind to gain full benefit. The War and the Venatori have claimed many experts, but we have located an Arcanist with great skill and a reputation for humbling first enchanters in both Andrastin and Imperial circles. I was just thinking it might be Arcanist. I I'm not sure. Arcanist, Arcanist, we'll figure it out. Two assassination attempts and at least one explosion have made landholders reluctant to allow her passage through their territory. Ah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Leliana is busy. Let's have it uh, uh, politically handled. Alliance can overwhelm any concern. The owners of where she will travel need only be convinced of the worth of pleasing us. Uh, do so, Josephine. All right, the Arcanist has been secured. Despite great cost and the concern of more than a few traditional-minded mages, she awaits a meeting with the Inquisitor in the Undercroft. Perfect. All right, let's see if we can send one more out here. Need more power for most of those. Let's check the Orlesian side. Flames of the Inquisition Charger. I think that's probably a mount like this red heart. Let me try to just grab those real quick, get them off the board. I think they're... Yeah, no time required. All right, we have the red heart. Let's check this one. Ink 
Inquisition Charger. There must be at least one of those. Maybe the Bog Unicorn? Yes, here we go. Inquisitor. I believe we did have a stable back in Haven, but I never stopped by to swap out our mount. We definitely can now. I think that's all the mounts. Alright, so I'm going to go to the Undercroft now and meet with the Arcanist. Arcanist? <laughs> I still haven't decided. I can't wait to see this all repaired. Alright. Quick stop in the Undercroft. Hello and welcome. Happy Thursday. Inquisitor? The Arcanist has arrived? You should see for yourself. She says Arcanist. Okay. Is the Golden Nug the Arcanist? Because that's awesome. Such a pleasure to see you again. Dagna is a, uh... I believe she's the only dwarf who was ever allowed into the mage's circle in Ferelden during Dragon Age 2. And she did her very best, and we're all really proud of her. You're the magical advisor? Oh, you're her. The Inquisitor. I'm Dagna. Arcanist Dagna. It's an honor. Oh, thank you. In a destroy everything sort of way. Welcome. I welcome you to the Inquisition and look forward to your contribution. Me too. I've heard some impossible things. I love impossible things. Those are the best to make, well, possible. I've looked at Herod's devices. Precision is fantastic, but typical, mundane, old thinking. No disrespect meant to the classical trades, but <laughs> you need a new perspective. I've made adjustments. As long as I stop keep dropping them, eaves you back there, Herod. Okay. Ah, uh, you notice the anchor? You seemed impressed by the anchor. What does it look like to you? I heard what everyone says. What you heard Corivia say. That's a long chain of who said what. To me, it says key, but keys do a lot of things. Open, lock, switch. Some open one thing, some open everything. It sounds like Corypheus made it to open, but it looks like you can use it to close. It may be that simple. It sure is pretty. Wish I could see through it. You, you want to see through my hand? I mean, we could probably arrange that somehow. I'm. Yeah, we'll talk later. Welcome, Dagna. Seen that in the chat. Have I missed the cutscene where someone was throwing goats at the castle wall? I don't believe you have. Something to look forward to for all of us. Oh, I do need to have her create one. I'm seeing it up there now. I am. Ready for anything in Let's see. It's something enchanted and yeah, something mastercrafted. Maybe we don't have the resources for it, but let's check. Sure it goes just right. We'll see. They'll all see. 
<laughs> I love Dagna. All right, so it's wrapped into the normal stuff. Let's see here. Looks like I have schematics for those. Yeah, I do have a couple of masterwork items. Hmm, the ability to heal would be nice. That's my only piece of fade touched iron. Let's try an iron bark. With... Ah, I love the different colors there. That's so cool. Oh, I think you can tint them again later. Heal bonus, sure. And ram leather is all it'll take. Alright, so this is like the armor I'm currently wearing, but I'm making a set of it from scratch. Let's try this. A healing freezing chakratar. That's, uh, that's quite a mouth mouthful. I'm just gonna label it great. What a great Chakratar this is. Alright. Now I need to enchant something, but let me check this tinting table real quick. Let's see if I have at all what I need. I guess you're limited just to what you could already craft with. It just lets you change it later, maybe. And that's fine. We'll stick with these until we have more color options. What does this change, though? Aha, just the mid-section part of it? All right. So where do I enchant? Is that a modify, or is it like... These weird machines. Mm -hmm. Must be a modify. Alright, so I'm doing 40 now. I could jump up to this virulent staff. And I guess I don't have any runes. I think that's what they mean by enchanting. So I must need to find a rune first. Do you have any runes for me? Uh, okay. That's fine. We'll keep looking around and come back to that. Let's see if we can get the main repairs done here. I believe we might just have to, like, step out and back in. Though I have a crazy idea. I remember doing some weird shortcut for this back in the day where if you go talk to Solus after you come to Skyhold he has a weird cutscene that'll refresh it. Let's see if I'm remembering I right. The fate, I felt the presence of an intriguing artifact in the hinterlands. If you are willing I would like to locate it. I have marked its location as best I could determine. Oh sure. We'll check it out. Uh, tell me about the Fade. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, for my wondering. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. Uh, please do. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster in an area that has seen many deaths. But your anchor, as Corypheus calls it, allows you some control over the breach. That suggests it was deliberate. And the veil? I'd like to know more about the veil. Circle mages call it the barrier between this world and the Fae. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fae was not a place one went, 
but a state of nature like the wind. That does sound marvelous. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality. Where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful. And the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. I'd like to know more about demons. The Chantry says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Interesting question. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them, if not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask. That's very kind. We'll talk later. Goodbye. All right, so we have his measuring the veil quest. Let me talk to Hello. him again. Uh, tell me about yourself. I'd like to know more about you, Solus. Why? Do I need a reason? Why not? Privacy? <laughs> Slightly disapproves. Are you concerned about the direction of this Inquisition once our work is done? Then don't tell me. I wasn't asking as part of the Inquisition. I'm sorry. With so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? Why? Just... Just tell me why, Solus. What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, the spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. I treasured my dreams. Being awake out of the Fade became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so Can you to teach me? I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imagination. To find interesting areas, one must be interesting. That is so interesting, for lack of a better word. I love that it works like that. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If Corypheus destroyed the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the Fade. Ah. Inquisitor, that is why I joined, not why I stayed. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I have enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the Fade. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable side benefit. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. All right, where so have you studied? You've traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Hmm. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's force. Was Dragon Age one? I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, 
I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the fate for real. <laughs> so it's like in the original game, you could make different choices like this one to depend on or change the outcome of events. And he's saying when he dreams in the fate, he can see all of those outcomes, all of the choices you could make. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I could use some spirits of wisdom and purpose right about now, if, if it's not too much trouble. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. Now those are names I recognize. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The fade reflects the minds of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. I'm impressed that you could become friends with spirits. Anyone who can dream has the potential. Few ever try. My friends comforted me in grief and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form as we understand it, the Chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? Well... In Varric's defense, he is defined at least 25% by his chest hair, because it's amazing. Have you felt it, Solus? Have you felt it? You need a body to be real. I deny all of this. Okay. Great answer. No, I, I, I'm into this. Yeah. I hadn't thought about it that way. But I see your point. I... Thank you. Few are willing to entertain such a notion. Oh, don't worry about me, Solus. I've seen the entire Legend of Korra six, seven times, start to finish. I'm, I'm with you here. We'll talk later. Goodbye. All right, so I did not get my little uh, cutscene that I was thinking, but that's all right. Nice to talk to Solus and catch up. Greetings. And he's very impressed by our uh, want of knowledge. Let me try one more time here. Uh, tell me more of yourself. I'm interested in what you told me of yourself and your studies. If you have time, I'd like to hear more. You continue to surprise me. All right, let us talk. This I might be it, actually. Let's this. see. Just have to be persistent with, with dear Solus. Yes, how is everyone this fine morning? I, I put my weight behind this question, too. All... Oh, I don't even know. T t 267 pounds? I'm just... I'm clutching various parts of myself. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Oh, this part feels heavy. What is that? Ah, it's my elbow. Sorry, didn't mean to get you excited there. <laughs> Goodness, you are quite dense. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's lovely. Why here? Haven is familiar. It will always be important to you. We talked about that already. So, did he put me to sleep, and we are dreaming we're back in Haven now? Together? I sat beside you while you slept, studying the anchor. I'm glad someone was watching over me. You were a mystery. You still are. I ran every test I could imagine. Searched the Fade, yet found nothing. Cassandra suspected duplicity. She threatened to have me executed as an apostate if I didn't produce results. Ah, uh, 
I wouldn't allow that. I would never have agreed to that. Probably. You were in no position to argue. You were never going to wake up? How could you? A mortal sent physically through the Fade. I was frustrated, frightened. The spirits I might have consulted had been driven away by the breach. Although I wished to help, I had no faith in Cassandra, or she in me. I was ready to flee. But you stayed. I did. I told myself, one more attempt to seal the rifts. I tried and failed. No ordinary magic would affect them. I watched the rifts expand and grow, resigned myself to flee, and then... It seems you hold the key to our salvation. You had sealed it with a gesture. And right then, I felt the whole world change. I'm not sure why I'm glad you stayed is the like, huh, I'm a tough guy option. I, I must be mis misreading that. But let's try it. For all our sakes, I'm pleased that you stuck around. As am I. You have fractured rules of man and nature. And you will shatter more before you are done. Visiting me here, even as a mage, it should not have been so easy for you. What do you mean? Where do you think we were? This isn't real. That's a matter of debate. Probably best discussed after you. Yes, we are sleeping. So that is what I was looking for. I think that actually uh, forces the castle repairs, the first phase of them at least, to go ahead. So there should be a little less rubble in the hallway. The Randy Dowager Quarterly. A waterlogged quarterly missive of suspect virtue. And segueing straight from that into, I really, really hope your test goes well today. Uh, sorry. Sorry for the weird arena we're in. Uh. But I am crossing my fingers and toes in all of what I hope are the right directions. <laughs> I was, I was dreaming. There was so much chrome on so much dome. That sounds like you were with Solus. All right, so I woke up in the uh, uh, tower of the castle here. We haven't been here yet. It, it was actually, the doorway was blocked by rubble. We couldn't get up here, is why that little trick works. Because you have to wake up in your room, and so they have to clear the rubble. So now we can see Sky Hole down below there, that little staircase just above my head is the front entrance where we were a moment ago. And this is my room. Welcome. Pick up these pamphlets here. I think those are new upgrades we can work on for the castle. And then there's also, you might have noticed my wardrobe change here. I'm out of my uh, field gear. Every time you're in Skyhold, and I think it was the same for Haven too, Every time you're in, like, your home hub, you have a casual wear or a formal wear that are stored in this wardrobe. So it's kind of nice because there's a lot of cool options. Let's try something crazy. And then you have, you know, home and away clothes to feel more comfortable. Let's try the lighter version of this. Yeah, that is interesting. Certain je ne sais quoi. But it is a little out of character for her, somehow. That's not very comfortable to lay laze around the house in. Same 
tunic, but white and... Ooh. Oh, that's fancy. Yeah. I'll stick with that for now. Get a little pop of color to our cutscenes. Such a beautiful spot up here in the mountains. Alright, let's see if those hallways are cleared, and then we can use that Skyhold customization table. Hello, ravens. Welcome. Make yourself at home. Try not to poop on Varric. He's probably down there. It's one of the main rules of Skyhold. I'm gonna put up on the walls somewhere. To all sentient creatures, do not, I repeat, Alright, so now we're repaired. Or getting there at the very least. I'm not sure if those scaffolds eventually go away too. But now we have the nice throne room there. Stained glass. Some uh, basic drapery in the hallways. Let's get one peek out here. I think those are the heraldry banners. Those will change. And then there's like these stakes in the ground here that we can change. Just giving a quick before picture. Then we'll jump back down to the Undercroft. I think a lot of these are, like, collectible. You need to do certain missions or find them out in the world. But some of them are based on, like, your starting class and race, I think. Oh, cool. I do have a lot of these. All right, so banners. That'll be, like, what was out in front of the stairs. And it is sort of important to me. The, the customization options are typically tied to, like, a, a political region or a cause or a, a group of people. And it's important to me that my Skyhold not be all one thing. It's a welcoming place for people from many, many nations. So I don't want it to be like a bastion of Kunari-ness or an elven place or a chantry place, necessarily. I want to have elements of all of those things. So, for our outdoor banners, I'm going to go to Winter Imperium. I've only got a couple of beds. Looks like a Kunari bed with a boat. A frostback basin, lots of furs bed. Or the regular one. I'll go regular for now. We'll unlock some more of those. You know, the other thing that... <laughs> now I'm more tempted. The other thing that Golden Nug might sink are those collectibles. I sure would like to have more options. So we'll synchronize your collectibles across games by downloading collectibles that you previously uploaded and uploading newly acquired ones. I I'm, I'm just going to do this. I really don't remember what it does, but... See if that unlocks. Yeah. All of these banners. So that's worth it. I'm sorry if it sort of cuts a corner there and we don't see some of those out in the world, but now we have full access to our customization options. So here are the different beds. We have a fancy or lesion bed. We have a regular or fancy free marches. I am a sucker for the old Ebenezer Scrooge. Our lesion beds are amazing. We have a dwarven bed. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see what that looks like. Alright. 
Still sticking with Tevinter and Beery there. Drapery. Inquisition draperies. It has a touch of a religious connotation because it's a chantry rule we used to invoke the Inquisition or whatever. So it's like I'm not sure we want to necessarily live under that, but that is the banner we live under, so that would be appropriate. Let's try that. Okay, heraldry. I'm kind of thinking Grey Warden for those. Though the Circle of Magi might not be bad either, because we are allied with the mages. I'm going to put that up. Circle of Magi Heraldry. We do need to unlock more of these decors. And I'll, I won't add Kunari stuff just yet. We'll come back and check those. All right, thrones. This is very important. Chantry throne looks like fire. We have a rough uh, shark jawbone throne. Fancy. Mages, nice. Ferelden. That's the one we have now. It's a little bit small, but workable. Orle, that's a nice tall one. A dragon maw throne. Wow. Legacy Kirkwall. That's very tough for me to pass up. I loved that whole aesthetic from Dragon Age 2. Like the loading screens and everything. Alright, and finally the stained glass window behind the throne. That should probably send a more direct message of some kind. If possible... Inquisition for now. All right, let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah. That is amazing. So we have Magi Heraldry, Inquisition Drapes, a Kirkwall Throne, Inquisition Windows, though I'm not sure if it is that window. That seems unchanged. Maybe it's just like those other windows around the castle. And here are our Tevinter banner stands. This looks great. You have to watch your eyeballs when you're going up the stairs. Our banners are sharp, but it'll be fine. Okay, another thing we have. Let's jump down here. I believe this is the way to the stable. The order was sent. Yes, come Hmm. Look for coal. I'll definitely come back to that. There's the stable. So let's see how many uh, collectible mounts I just unlocked with that golden nug synchronization. I guess it's not him. It's... Stables. There we go. All right. So there's exotic mounts, there's deer, there's dracolisks, and there's horses. We now have most of the horses from my last playthrough. Including that uh, Inquisition Charger we got from the map. Heavily armored, that's really cool. So dracolisks are neat. Hearts are amazing if you're after that, uh, you know, Thranduil look. 
to do a lot of sneering, but it's worth it. That is very tempting. I kind of want this swift wind to Russian. However, let's see what's under exotics. Bog unicorn. <laughs> That's a little strange. It appears to be an undead horse with a sword stuck through its face. It's not really a unicorn, but it's close. A war nug. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. All right, legendary war nug. I'm a huge fan. Yep. All right, so that will be our new mount. We have a ton to explore here. Let me go ahead and hit that look for coal option. Get that started. Okay. But this violates everything we know about the Fade. So it does. Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. A demon, more likely. If you prefer, although the truth is somewhat more complex. Cole but I like him. At Haven. He saved a lot of lives. We cannot know the true motivations of a demon. In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre, monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique, Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. Uh, I'll talk with him. I should hear it's what fine. Cole has to say for himself. My there eyes, by the help. way, are, if none are of up us here. Remember him, he could be anywhere. He's just over there. I'd recognize that hat anywhere. Haven. So many soldiers fought to protect the pilgrims so they could escape. Choking fear. I can't think from the medicine, but the cuts rack me with every heartbeat. Hot, white pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to... I'm dying. I I'm... Dead. Ah. You're feeling their pain? It's louder this close, with so many of them. Would you like to go somewhere more comfortable? Yes, but here is where I can help. Every breath slower, like lying in a warm bath, sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone. Cracked brown pain. Dry. Scraping. Thirsty. Here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. Ah. Uh. Cole, you're breaking my heart. You're using your powers as a spirit to help people. Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes, but I made friends, too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. 
I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different, but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt, the helpless. There's someone. Hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. He wants mercy. Help. Ah. If I want uh, if I want Cole to stay and I want to trust him, I'd have to trust him here too. All right. Help him. It's all right. I want to stay. All right. We've got the forgotten boy. Dear Cole is now a selectable party member. I suppose it's also a good time to, like, check out everyone's armor and stuff. Let me jump over there. I check that too, but that's not where I wanted to go. Okay, I think I'm still... Oh, pardon me. <laughs> pardon my throat. I think I'm still missing a person. It must be Vivian back in uh, Orlais here. We can jump back there. All right, quick look at armor. I suppose I should change into my new one, but it's a shame to lose that red. Let me see if anyone else needs it first. I like that Varric can wear these uh, Kunari duds. It's very appropriate for him somehow. That's also stunning and matches my casual wear. I love the detail and the time they spent making everyone's armor different. Even though they're the same pieces, they look completely different between characters. That's just really cool. All right, Cole's hat. I cannot separate him from that. It's very important. Oh, that's a nice look for Black Wall. All right, so nothing really that I need to swap into yet. Let me see if we have time to jump in here. Assuming I must have just missed it on our way out of Val Royo after we had that first Templar conversation. Jumping back here. And maybe it's this. Alright. Dorian. Gold. Solus. Let's go.
Oh, yeah, it must be even cooler as a... A seamstress? A... a tailor? <laughs> I'm not sure what the appropriate term is. You actually know these things. And those little details must be very satisfying. Ah, expert fabric technician and engineer. Yes, indeed. You are the Herald Circle of Mage. I have an invitation for you. First Enchanter Vivian, there it is. I just did not get the invitation there on the way out of Val Royale. Or in. So, let me see if I can... Fast travel. To the Ghislaine estate. Expert fabric arcanist. So I believe this might be our last party member. We should have the full set at Skyhold there. It's a shame Vivian didn't get to see uh, Haven and the whole exodus thereof. Though I guess she's, she's sort of the kind of person who would be like, Call me when you've reached Skyhold. So this will work out well either way. Hi, I fit in here. What a I was invited, my lady. Seeing the same faces at every event becomes so tiresome. So you must be a guest. I'm glad I could provide a little novelty for you. Are you here on business? I have heard the most curious tales of you. I cannot imagine half of them are true. Oh, it's all true. Everything you've heard, completely true. Better and better. The Inquisition should attend more of these parties. The Inquisition. What a lot of pig shit. Washed Excuse me? And crazed seekers. No one can take them seriously. Everyone knows it's just an excuse for a bunch of political outcasts to grab power. Hmm. I've never made any claims to holiness. What's your point? In front of all these people, you admit to being a pretentious usurper. We know what your Inquisition truly is. If a good you were time? a honor, you'd step outside and answer the charges. My dear Marquis, how unkind of you to use such language in my house to my guests. Yeah, he said pig. Well, uh, you heard him. You know such rudeness is intolerable. Uh, Madame Vivienne, I humbly your pardon. You should. It looks like it hurts. Does what it hurt? Am I going Tell to me. With you, my dear. My lady, you're the wounded party in this unfortunate affair. What would you have me do with this foolish, foolish man? Shattered just one of his legs. Ah, it's fine. I think the Marquis has seen the error of his ways. By the grace of Andraste, you have your life, my dear. Do be more careful with it. <laughs> I'm delighted you could attend this little gathering. I've so wanted to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vivienne, first enchanter of Montsimard, an enchantress to the Imperial Court. A uh, pleasure. Charm, Lady Vivienne. Ah, but I didn't invite you to the chateau for pleasantries. With divine Justinia dead, 
The Chantry's in shambles, but the faithful flock to your banner, pinning their hopes on you to deliver them from chaos. As the leader of the last loyal mages of Thedas, I feel it only right that I lend my assistance to your cause. Mm. It's a bit rude. What assistance could you possibly bring? Well, she just froze that guy, so... Let me ask this. What's in this for you? The same thing anyone gets by fighting this chaos. The chance to meet my enemy, to decide my fate. I won't wait quietly for destruction. That's commendable. The Inquisition will be happy to have you, Lady Vivian. Great things are beginning, my dear. I can promise you that. All right, we've got the full complement now. All companions safe in Skyhold. So I'm sorry we didn't get out into the world a little more here. We had so many uh, quick startup quests that I've blown my whole hour. But we did have... Oh, what's the word? <laughs> a good time. This is one of my favorite parts, strangely. Kind of settling into Skyhold and customizing everything and getting it set up. So thank you for bearing with me there. We have just a couple of minutes left, but probably not too much else we need to worry about in Skyhold itself. So next session we'll try to maybe talk to everyone else, make sure everyone's feeling okay after the move from Haven, check in with Dorian, you know, all that important stuff. Sarah. And uh, then we'll get back out there in the world and start doing more quests. Aha, however, before we leave completely, let me check in with Harding. One of the most important members of our Skyhold contingent. Scout Harding. Your worship. What's new? What's been going on? Seeker Cassandra came through here, looking like a storm cloud. That's just her face, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's just her face. So, who's Scout Harding, really? Me? Oh, I'm no one. Live near Red Cliff Oh, come on. Life. Herded sheep for my neighbor. When the Inquisition came the through my village, songs I they'll sing of you. Them everything I knew about the area. Then I signed on. Wanted to see the world before it was swallowed up by that thing out there. Shouldn't you be out there scouting? In a bit. We're in Skyhold for supplies and a change of personnel. Not me, though. Indispensable. <laughs> I have to go. All right. So, we'll be back to talk to everyone else here. Sarah, Cassandra, Iron Bull, Blackwall, Brian, Vivian. So many friends to catch up with. Try not to impale yourself on a branch there, Vivian. It's getting a little close. Thank you again for your patience. I, I do feel like we have a few more repair phases here. I think these scaffolds disappear eventually and leave us with just a nice big great hall. So it'll be nice to just continue continue to improve. But we have it set for now. I'm just procrastinating. I don't want to leave you nor Thedas. But here we go. Thank you for your time. We'll be back here soon. Bye for now.